Jill to win the land tonight, so I'm, I'm practicing my Jill. <laughs> and she's going to do it to you. Tell me what this one is. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, it's a little bit invisible. It's a cloud. Who's been in the cloud? No, this cloud, this is my cloud. We are the bridge. No? No one? Come on, show hands. Who's been on the cloud journey? Fantastic. One, two, three, okay. Who has not been on the cloud journey? Okay, few of them. So this presentation is for both of you. Back in the storytelling, I want to tell the story of my first journey in the cloud. Actually, my first digital transformation. It was very painful because it's a change. <coughs> change. We as human beings are adverse to change. And I remember my first cloud transformation, even more painful because it was new. There was no documentation, no material, no knowledge sharing. Before I kick off, I want to give you a little bit of a preview. How can figure out the question that the number 42 answered? <laughs> Who's the geek in here? Meaning a lot. Good. I wanted to reserve it at the very end, but it's the answer to the fundamental question to the universe, and that's, that's the reason why. So, what we're going to talk about it today, a little bit about my background, how things have changed from the beginning to where we are today on the cloud journey, what's the problem and what is going to be our ideal world from a cybersecurity perspective, and then five to eight steps, how to reach that. Let's say, let's call it eight simple steps to reach that. And then we're going to go for some conclusion, wrap up and take away, and we're going to talk a little bit about what we do with the Cloud Security Alliance to make the cloud more secure all together. So, a little bit about myself. I'm Francesco Sicolone. I'm the founder of NSC42. We work worldwide, but specifically in this country with NSC42 on few of the organizations that you see up there. So, telco, um, insurance, banking, and so on and so forth. So, I'm a security person. Who is a security person here? Okay, a few of them. I don't tend to go in a lot of security conference. I do a few of them. But I like to bring here a message specifically to the practitioner that can help us ensure that security is paid in, in everything. Security is everybody's job. And it's gonna be a common theme throughout my presentation. I'm gonna explain the why of security and why is everybody's job. And I'll give you a hint. We all fundamentally get affected by it. Every data breach, we all get affected by it. Who has been in any of the recent data breach? I have. No? You've been lucky. I have been 14 times. Willingly or not willingly. So even if we're careful, we're gonna, we're gonna get caught into it. Anyway, cracking on. How things have changed. Back in 2005, we were more or less in data center land. We fast track it to today, we are in cloud. Who can tell me when AWS released its first, its first service? When has you came up? Okay, let's see. Let's see quickly. Back in 2005, we were in data center lab. 2006, we had Amazon releasing the first service. 2007, nothing much happened. 2008, wow, bomb, all of three. Google started releasing up NG. Microsoft joins the game. IBM, and then finally, Google with Cloud Engine. What happened from 2014 onward? We had adoption. We have deployment at scale. People start using. 
So if back in 2006 and 2010, what would cloud service look like? Just a bunch of API. Then they started introducing the graphic user interface. So it became very, very easy to actually spin stuff on the cloud. That's an advantage because a lot of SME start deploying things in the cloud. But from a security perspective, it's quite scary. Everybody could spin up a service in the cloud without us even knowing. And then let's not talk about the shadow IT. Now, just let me summarize the security challenge. We've seen in recent years that we have an increased amount of breach. What else that implies? We have an impact on cost. Reputational, breaches, fines, and so on and so forth. Cloud transformation tends to be fast change. Cloud service provider tend to release service very, very quickly. And they are sometimes immature. As a security professional, we struggle to keep up with the data center land. Let's take it to the cloud. It's double the speed, three times the speed, five times the speed. And fundamentally, security is just doing things right. And then the big problem of all that we, we had from the very beginning, we don't have collaboration between teams. Only if we work together, we can make cloud secure. And security is everybody's job. Now, just to give you an idea of why security is everybody's responsibility, I just I just soak it in. Just a timeline of the recent breaches. Probably you have an account in some of this. I had an account in 14 of this. <laughs> and so we all get affected by it. If we don't treat our customers' data as our own data, as if we will get affected by it, we cannot make it secure. We cannot have that personal investment. And just to give you a scale of the problem, that's the size of the breach in the past two, three years. It's massive, isn't it? Scary. And just to give you some number, cybercrime is an industry. It's growing fast. Three times since 2015. And they make profit, quite a lot of profit. Just this morning, one of the crypto exchange got breached. They extracted 40 billion. They do it for profit, don't do it for fun. And just to take the concept of security in the context of cloud, if one of your servers get breached, then most of the time use it not to steal your data, but to mine, crypto mine. And so what, what does that has an impact on your cloud environment? Let's look at the crypto mining compromise account bill. It's far as up. It costs money. They use free resource because the resource is yours. Now, let's imagine we have from a cybersecurity perspective, infinite amount of time, infinite amount of people. That would be our ideal world. We could just inject security people in everything that we do, and that would be our ideal world, because we get to do things right. Unfortunately, we're not in the dreamland, we're not in the world of the clouds, but well, we, we so far. <laughs> so how do we reach that? What's the solution? How do we get there? We're going to see the cloud responsibility matrix. Once we step into the cloud, not to fall from the clouds, we're going, to we're going to need to know what our responsibility and what our cloud provider responsibility are. We're going to learn about the foundation, how to build a strong cloud. We're going to know what free and available tools are out there from the Cloud Security Alliance, from the practitioner. Use the patterns. 
we're going to see how to design security and how to do security by design. And there's a slightly but fundamental difference. And then the buzzword, shift left. What that means, it just do security at the beginning of a project. How to do security testing and finally how to put everything together in dev, set, ops, and sprinkle it with some business. So, you step in your friend's house, you need to know what you should do, how you should behave, what your responsibility are. When you step into the cloud, you need to know exactly the same thing. What you should do to secure the cloud and what your cloud provider is responsible to secure inside the cloud. And I'll give you a hint. Look at the backups. And what's the impact on the organization if you don't do backups? And if you don't do restore, if you don't try and run restore, and how long that gonna take you? And how long that gonna cost you? Now, I think everybody knows about the cloud in this room. Does anybody know about the cloud pizza? You can do it at home, and you're responsible for the full stack. You buy, you build, cook, you eat. Well, you're not very good at baking it, so you go and you buy. That's your infrastructure as a service. Somebody else is responsible to actually do the pizza, and you're just responsible to warm it up and eat it. You're a little bit more lazy. So you go and order it. Somebody's responsible to deliver it, to, it, to bake it, cook it, and you're just responsible to eat it. And then you just want to use a service. So you go out and you buy your pizza. That's fundamentally what the cloud is and what the various different services. And in the various different elements, there is a different responsibility. Somebody's responsible to a different part of the pizza. Ultimately, you're responsible to eat it. Hopefully you like it. <laughs> so, how you build a strong house? You don't sleep on the foundation. And how would you build a strong cloud? Come on. You don't sleep on the foundation. Perfect. So what are those cloud foundations? So, I'm just an example on, on the Azure one. AWS has done the same thing. They keep the cloud provider gives you a suggestion on things that you should consider at the very beginning of a project. Networking, account separation, how to issue accounts, and stuff like that. They are fundamental things. Spend time at the beginning of a transformation to actually make those things right. And you might ask why. If you change those things on the fly during the project, they're very drastic change, they're very painful. Worst change on the fly and network while in the middle of a transformation. We have a photo from guys. Then the next step, consider a, a reference framework. And then take it a level down. Break it down into actionable elements. And then in any kind of digital transformation, consider your organization function. Consider what your application are delivering. Because you could reinvent service, or because some of those functions, you might not need them anymore. So why transform something that you don't need? So, as we said, nobody gave free lunch, but sometimes those free lunch are available. Cloud pattern. Some of those cloud pattern has been produced by the provider, by the Cloud Security Alliance, by the practitioner like our organization. Account isolation. Sorry. Traditional control versus cloud control. It's all things that you can consider at the beginning of transformation or during a transformation and see how other people have done. Take example. Use free stuff that is available. So, the fundamental question that I ask all my organization, cloud transformation are fast, are big. How do you expand your security team without expanding your security team? Anybody has an idea? Go for it. Security champions. Good. Or you elect security engineer. You put a, take an engineer, you put a security add-on, and hence you have an expanded security team. Or a security champion. So once 
you have that security engineer, what would that security engineer do at the beginning of a project? Normally, we'll develop a threat model. Very painful exercise, half an hour, an hour of threat model, and your engineer will be so far off your design that will miss the basic thing. Who as a kid has played car game or board game? Did you have fun doing it? I had. So what would you do to make your work fun? You use the power of communication. There's a very nice little deck, free, available for everybody, called Installation of Privilege Car Game. Well, you can give it to your engineers, they can throw challenge at their own application without creating complex model, you do 15 minutes incremental threat model exercise and they'll have fun doing it. And the second time you don't even have to push them, they'll do it themselves, proven. Now shift left, let's demystify this password. What does that mean? just doing things at the very beginning of the project. Capture the security requirement. Do track modeling. Don't leave security testing at the very end of the testing. Do functional testing. Security testing is nothing else than other functional tests. But they find it at the early stage and you won't have a project just fling it across to the security team and say, well, let's fix it. <coughs> Security in test. Just keep on doing vulnerability assessment, infrastructure assessment during the development phase. So you don't leave that work at the very end and don't elect something in production unless you can fix. And that's your automation stuff. Have automated tool to do code scanning, fix it, and do it in the way that it gives you proper results. And don't allow things to go in production unless they're secure. And you have the automation, you don't have the security with a big red state that says no. But you have something uh, objective that says no. And then the other thing is, don't spend too much money in bug bounty program. Reinvest the money on your people internally. Let them fix bugs. Promote, capture the flag event. And a surprise could be a badge, could be a hat, could be a free lunch. How much does it cost a free lunch for a tea? Probably less than a, bug, a traditional bug bounty. And you reinvest in knowledge sharing inside your team. Now, the buzzword, last one, I promise. That's the cost. I think. We talk about extensively today about the FSEC so we will, you will have hear it today. But it's nothing else than putting security, developer, and operation all sitting together and working together, not having the development team just fixing something or creating something and flinging it across the operation and saying it's your problem. Having an application owner being in control of their own testing. They have the security vulnerability, they carry on the risk. They carry the responsibility. They can decide, I'm not going to fix it. But they need to live with it. So empower your team. So that they can love security. So if they become responsible for it. They understand it. They own it. Because security is everybody's responsibility. Now, if you look a little bit about the future, what would you see in the future? Well, we have machine learning, we have AI, we have another tons of buzzwords, we have new technology. How do we fix this new technology from a security perspective? We keep on doing things right. Security is nothing else than doing things right. To give the security people the time to understand the technology and to secure it properly and to work with the people to implement. Just don't rush into a technology just because it's the latest trend. 
understand and use it to your advantage. And then the security people get on board with it from day zero to evaluate the product, not to just, I've developed this, can you fix it please, Mr. Security? So, in conclusion, security is everybody's job. Now you know why. It's not just a buzzword. So, we've seen the evolution and the security challenge. We've seen the ideal world and the eight step how to reach it. And we've seen a little bit what the future reserves us. So, I'm going to conclude with the activity that we do with the Cloud Security Alliance. We have a conference coming up. I invite you to come along to join the security talk, to bring your experience. We have a mentoring call, and we're sponsoring an award with the Cloud Security Awards. I don't think we have time for questions, so I can answer your question after the presentation. I'd like you to thank everybody of you for listening to me today. As, as Francesca says, uh, he'll be back on stage in a little while.